YouTube tells us that a lot of people who watched our channel also watched a video called my iPhone battery health increased from 88 to 94% using this battery health fix. Today we're going to explain why that video is total bullshit and tell you the truth about where the battery health percentage number actually comes from. And by the end of this video, you'll know why it's impossible to maintain 100% battery health, let alone increase it. Back to the video David mentioned. According to that video, all you need to do to maintain 100% battery health is go to some sketchy website, download some sketchy app with no reviews. Stick around to the end because we're actually gonna install this app on an iPhone and show you what it does. It asks you to download a configuration profile and that's a major red flag. Configuration profiles are used by beta testers like us as well as many legitimate schools and companies, but they can be abused. What a configuration profile absolutely cannot do is change the chemical composition of the battery inside of your iPhone. Let's talk about the maximum capacity in the iPhone battery health and how it's calculated, this is what Apple says. Maximum battery capacity measures the device battery capacity relative to when it was new. A battery will have lower capacity as the battery chemically ages. Let's go to math world. Divide the current battery capacity by the maximum battery capacity and that's what should be the number next to maximum capacity in iPhone settings. But it isn't. Your iPhone is designed to retain up to 80% of its maximum capacity after 500 charge cycles. It's about 1% per 25 charge cycles. One charge cycle is when you've used a total of 100% battery life. And this is where some people get confused. They think they can cheat the system by not charging their iPhone up to 100% or letting it go down to zero. The batteries are smarter than that now. Let's say you start at 100% and you drain it down to 40, that equals 60%. You charge your iPhone back up to 90%, and then it drains down to 50%, that is 40 total percent, giving you 100% or one charge cycle. You won't maintain 100% iPhone battery health by charging your iPhone in a specific way to avoid hitting 0% or 100%. All you'll do is inconvenience yourself. And let's touch on another myth real quick that you shouldn't charge your iPhone overnight. Macworld recently wrote an article about a viral TikTok that proves charging your iPhone battery overnight is bad for battery health. That article is absolute garbage. Why doesn't anyone write articles about our viral TikToks? Because good press doesn't rely on TikTok to find subject matter experts. You're right, they go to YouTube, hit that subscribe wow. button below our video. We'll get into more details later, but take it from Apple, charge your Apple lithium ion battery whenever you want. This is where we talk about why dividing the iPhone's current battery capacity by its maximum capacity doesn't give you the number that you see in battery health. Batteries aren't digital. They're all unique because of their chemical composition and some of a higher capacity than others. You'd think 100% battery health would be your battery's maximum capacity, but it isn't. Let's talk about how to see your maximum capacity, your current capacity, and your cycle count. And your future capacity. Wait, that's not a thing. You could bet though it's gonna go down. And you could do this by going to iPhone Analytics. Let's open up the settings app, scroll down, and tap privacy and security. Scroll down and tap analytics and improvements, then tap on analytics data and look for your most recent analytics file. If you have an Apple Watch, be careful. Apple Watch analytics logs look almost identical to the iPhone analytics logs. So let's tap into that file and there are three things we're looking for. Number one is maximum FCC. That's the original charge capacity. FCC stands for full charge capacity. Nominal charge capacity. That's the current charge capacity and cycle count. That's your number of charge cycles. Trying to skip through this mess is nearly impossible, but fortunately there are a few things you could do to make the process easier. Option one, you could tap the share button in the upper right hand corner of the screen and airdrop the file to your computer, then use the search function to find those three categories. Option two, you can copy and paste the text of the file into the notes app and then search for the analytics. Or option three, you could just download a shortcut on your iPhone that does all the hard work for you. I like option three. To download the shortcut, click the link in the section below the subscribe button. And it'll open in the shortcuts app. Tap add shortcut. Now we're gonna go back to the settings app. Tap the share button in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Scroll down to battery stats. Tap on that. So my full charge capacity is 3,345 milliamp hours. My nominal charge capacity is 3,259 milliamp hours. And I've gone through 50 charge cycles. To start to make sense of some of these numbers, we need to know the difference between what Apple calls 100% and what the actual capacity of that battery is, which is different than that. And every battery, as David said earlier, has a slightly different maximum capacity because of the chemical composition. So David's maximum capacity is that maximum FCC number. What was that, David? 3345. 
5. So I'll pretend to be Apple and I'm testing batteries and David's 3345. Let's say my phone is 3215. Somebody else, 3450, some lucky guy. And then Apple's running all these tests and these are all different phones, all these different dots, okay? So what Apple wants to do is pick a 100% number that's safe. They want all the iPhones that are made to have the same 100% battery health because they don't want people to take it out of the box and all of a sudden it's 97 or 99 even because then people are going back to the Apple store. Apple's safe number 3200 milliamp hours equals 100% capacity. To find David's original maximum capacity, we take his number 3345 and we divide it by what Apple calls 100%, which is 3,200, and we get what, David? How about 104.5%. 5%, that's an A++ for you. What's your current capacity? 3,259 milliamp hours. 59 divided by 3,200 equals what? 101.8. And how many charge cycles? 50. After 50 charge cycles, David has lost how much? 2.7%. According to Apple, you should lose about 1% for every 25 charge cycles, so David is actually outpacing that number a little bit. Just a little great. bit. Yeah, a little bit. not ideal. So he's still at 101.8%. Is that what your battery health number says? Well, let's go back to the main page of the settings app. Scroll up. I don't scroll up. Just tap battery. Tap battery health and charging, and it says 100% maximum capacity. It's lying because it's impossible to maintain 100% battery health in real life. Every time you discharge the battery, you lose a fraction of a percentage. It's not anything you're going to notice, but it happens. Ultimately, maintaining 100% battery health comes down to reducing the number of charge cycles your iPhone goes through. So should I just turn on low power mode all the time? No, it's great when you're at a pinch, but what low power mode does is it turns off a bunch of great features on your iPhone to try and preserve battery life. So you're also saying it doesn't matter if I charge my iPhone overnight? Your iPhone doesn't care what time it is. We'll tell you about some real battery saving tips in just a minute, but first we'll download that Battery Pro app to see how it actually works. I'm gonna go to that weird website on my iPhone. I'm gonna search for Battery Pro. Tap install and look at that bar. It's going nice and uniform across the screen. Hint, hint, if you see a progress bar on a website and it looks like it's way too smooth, it's not doing anything. It's just saying, okay, I'm gonna take one minute to get from here to there. It's just a graphic. Why do they do that? To make it seem legit. And this website is trying to download a configuration profile. Do you want to allow this? Of course, allow. <laughs> Don't actually do this. Profile again. download review. The He's profile. a professional. Review the profile in settings. Let's close out of that. Let's go over to the settings app. We're gonna tap back to the main page of settings. If we scroll up, profile downloaded. Let's tap on that. And see how it says web clip over here? That's how I knew the whole thing was BS. Well, we're gonna tap install. Enter my passcode. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, consent, no special permissions required. Tap next. Profile not signed, is that, a, is that an issue? Not more than any of the other problems with this. Let's tap install, tap install, and we're done. Battery Pro is installed, so let's tap done. All right, so now David's installed the app. Let's go to the home screen. We're gonna open up the Battery Pro app. Missing files, we need more files. Now it's a done. We're download that? additional files to continue, so you need to download more apps. When you tap Git next to iHeartRadio, for example, it shoots you over to the App Store. This is called an affiliate link. If you make a purchase after clicking on this link, then the scammer, whoever's behind all this BS, will get a commission. Yeah, let's go back to our Battery Pro app. Oh boy. Let's just, let's see if we can just do all these and... Uh, I bet it works after you do all of them. wonder if the guy who made the YouTube video is actually getting these commissions. Probably. It still says zero of three. So as you can see, this is not fixing your iPhone battery health. It is a scam to get it's a you scam. to give them dollars. Just to peek behind the curtain here, you can see at the top of the screen here, David's got the black bar going on all the way across. That's because it's a web clip. It's not actually the settings app that that guy was showing you in the video. It's a website with a picture of the settings app with 100% on it. What would Apple do if you walked into the store and you showed them this app? They would run a diagnostic on your phone and realize that your battery was actually fine. Let's talk about some real iPhone battery tips that'll help you reduce the number of charge cycles your iPhone goes through. Open up the settings app, scroll down and tap battery and then tap battery health and charging. First, let's talk about peak performance capability. To understand peak performance capability, we need to get in our time machine and go all the way back to 2017. In 2017, Apple was caught throttling back people's iPhones if they had older batteries. 
in a scandal that has now become known as Battery Gate. At the time, we said it was BS. It was. Apple said that they were doing it because they wanted to protect older iPhones, and they totally didn't do it to slow down older iPhones just so that they could sell new ones. And how correct were we, David? $500 million correct. How much of that did we get? None. Zero. None. In 2020, Apple agreed to pay over $500 million as part of a class action lawsuit. We told you so. The result of all this is that Apple built in the ability to turn off performance and management protections. If you have an older iPhone and have that option, go ahead and turn it off. Next, let's talk about optimized battery charging. Optimized battery charging says it'll help reduce battery aging by learning your charging habits and not charging your iPhone only when you need it, but it requires you to leave on two settings we recommend turning off. Those are system customization and significant locations. So it's gonna optimize the battery charging, but it's gonna use more battery throughout the day, which is gonna increase your cycle count. That's why we typically leave this off. The same is true for clean energy charging. This is a new iOS 16 feature that selectively charges your iPhone when lower emission options are available. We don't really know how it works. Yeah, I mean, it's another one of those settings where you need to have other settings turned on for it to work. And I'm as pro environment as the next guy, but to think that turning on this switch is gonna drastically reduce your carbon footprint is uh, ludicrous. Misguided. Next, let's talk about background app refresh. This is one of those features that low power mode turns off for all of your apps, but instead you can just go in ahead of time and turn it off for the apps that don't need it. So if we go back to the main page of settings, scroll up and tap general, and then tap background app refresh. Which apps do you want to be able to download new content in the background of your iPhone? At the top of this list, tap on background app refresh and you'll see the option to choose just Wi-Fi. And that in itself can be a battery saver because if you're out and about during the day and your phone is constantly trying to connect to cellular networks, it's gonna drain your battery faster. Let's tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen and ask yourself, which of my apps need to be able to download new content in the background of my iPhone? Most of the time, the answer is gonna be no. For me, I leave on Slack and Discord and Messenger, and then I turn everything else off. Let's talk about another setting that low power mode turns off, and that is push mail. Let's tap back to the main page of settings. Scroll down and tap mail, then tap accounts, and then tap fetch new data. Your email lives on a server. Your phone maintains a connection to that server to check to see if there's new mail. With push, it's always connected. With Fetch, you decide how often your iPhone wakes up to check to see if there's new mail. So, saves battery life. Yep, turn off the switch at the top of the screen next to push, and then choose every 30 minutes, 15 minutes, every hour, whatever works for you. I choose 15 minutes. And anytime you open up the mail app, your mail will fetch for you. Let's bring this discussion of bad internet advice and iPhone myths full circle by talking about closing your apps but they like us, David. We don't wanna talk about this because most people think that if you close out your apps, it doesn't make a difference in battery life. But in real life, based on my experience as an Apple employee, it does make a difference. You should close out your apps. Also, just from a usability perspective, the point of the app switcher is to be able to quickly navigate between apps. If you have 30 apps open in your app switcher, it's gonna take you forever to scan back and forth. Yeah, it's useless. Nobody ever talks about that. Next up is setting that even Apple recommends leaving on. Let's tap back to the main page of settings, scroll up and tap accessibility, tap display and text size and scroll all the way down and turn on the switch next to auto brightness. Auto brightness is another word for please join our channel. There's a join button below the video. It says join and it's in a little oval now. It used to be blue, it's not anymore. Yeah, click that button, see what you can get. Auto brightness, instead of having your display cranked up all the way, all day long, draining battery, this will adjust it for you, it'll be nice. And what about you iPhone 14 Pro users out there with your always on displays? You think you're special, but you're draining battery, but you don't have to. Let's tap back to the main page of settings, then tap on display and brightness. Scroll down and tap on always on display and turn off the switch next to show wallpaper. Apple listened to me and David in our iPhone 14 Pro review and we said, Apple, what are you doing here with this always on display? We don't need to see the wallpaper. We just wanna know what time it is and maybe see some other stats. So Apple built the switch for us. That is show wallpaper. Yeah, turn it off. Save a little bit of battery life. Also, if you just don't like always on display like me, 
I'm going to turn that off, and I think that they'll save a little bit of battery life when you do that. It will, technically. You don't like always on display, I David? don't, no. What I would really love is if you watch our iOS 16 battery tips video for a ton of more battery tips that'll help you reduce the number of charge cycles your iPhone goes through and helps you preserve your maximum battery capacity. Oh, I have my iPhone 14 Pro, and I don't like the always on display. Meanwhile, there are people out there, David, who have phones yeah. that don't have always on display, and they would just, they'd love to be able to turn it on. Gra grass is always greener.